Hello and welcome to Gadget Joe and today we take a look at the Thermal Take Level 20 GT. We recently reviewed the Thermal Take Level 20 XT, a case in a series that are celebrating Thermal Take's 20 year anniversary. The XT impressed so much that it received the Chassis of the Year award. Today we have a look at the GT version. Will it live up to the XT standards? Let's find out. The box for the GT is simple, all black with Level 20 GT written across the front. Removing the case, you get the case wrapped up in a bag and plenty of thick packaging foam. The case comes complete with no assembly required, so lots of protection is needed for all those glass panels. Let's start with the styling of a GT. The entire case is enveloped in four glass panels, and the signature grey curved pillars on the edge with black accents give it that unique, classy, yet aggressive look. Before we can really take a closer look at the details of the case, we need to start by doing one thing. The glass panels are not tinted, but are high quality 5mm tempered glass panels. They are highly reflective, but when on your desk and lit up, shouldn't have any issues with reflections. The overall look of a GT is simply stunning. It is a large full tower E80X case that has space to spare. Coming in at 22.9 inches tall, 11.6 inches wide and 23.3 inches deep, it has a huge footprint allowing for even the most complex builds and cooling and storage systems. Taking a look at the exterior of the case, we will focus on the elephant in the room first. Most of you will have noticed the lock on the side panels. This is to keep your system secure and safe and really brings home that premium factor to the GT. Unlocking the case is as simple as turning the key and then opening. Each panel is closed shut with the help of magnets too, so they won't randomly swing open at any time. Moving to the front of the case, you see the glass covering the entire panel. The design is simple yet striking, and the Thermaltake logo and font at the bottom complements it perfectly. The curves across the top is slightly different as the top panel actually houses the external I.O. connectivity. However, the same curved theme follows throughout. On one side of the case you get the same curved edges once again, with an I.O. panel housing two USB 2, two USB 3 and one USB Type-C connector. And that's not all either as on the flip side you get a headphone and mic port, a reset button, loading lights and a large square LED backlit power button. The top panel is an unconventional design to most, but it's certainly very striking and sometimes it's good to be different. The curved edges look fantastic and really provide a nice clean look to the GT. There is space in between the glass and the panels on the front and back too for added airflow. It's business as usual on the top with more glass. Removing the top panel for access is simple. Pop your hand underneath the panel at the rear and holding the chassis you simply pull it away and it will pop out. Once you have popped it back out, you can proceed to pop the rest out. You are left with a bare bone chassis top, and what's more is that you can remove this entire top panel using these four thumb screws. This is perfect for mounting radiators ranging from 120 up to 360 millimeters in size. You can mount three 120, three 140, or two 200 millimeter fans here too. Secure it back into place with the same thumb screws. Underneath the top glass panel there is a dust filter that is strong yet flexible and this screws into the panel. Putting the panel back into place is as simple as popping it back in and you're done. The rear of the case looks much like any standard ATX case, with space for up to 140mm fans to the right and an I.O. panel for the motherboard to the left. You will notice the two hinges either side of a chassis that hold the side glass panels in position. At the top is the space that you use to remove the top panel as we just saw. Moving to the bottom of the rear you get mounting space for PSU in the center and the other hinges for the side panels. You have more ventilation holes to the right and 8 expansion slots in the middle, held secure with this panel here. This is also one of the GT's party tricks and all you need is a screwdriver. Undo the securing panel at the right with these thumb screws and remove the panel completely. 
Now undo these two screws to the left of the expansion slots, followed by one here and two at the top. Keep these screws safe and now all you do is simply slide the entire tray and remove it and then you can mount it horizontally back into position. Slide it in and secure with the screws and you have an instant vertical GPU expansion slot mount. You also get a box of accessories within the box for your level 20 GT. Inside you get four plastic brackets that are designed to allow 200mm fans to be mounted onto the smaller 360mm radiators. You get a silver thermal tape keyring, a fan reduction cable, a big bag containing a user manual, small bag of assorted fan screws, standoffs and zip ties, a buzzer, some foam sticky pads and the last but not least the keys for the lock. Now that we've covered the externals of a GT, let's turn our attention to the internals. At the rear side of a chassis, you get a large open space with a motherboard cooling cutout. Nice, strong, heavy duty rubber grommets for cable management. Three drive bays that are simply removed by unscrewing this thumb screw. The trays can hold either 3.5 or two 2.5 inch drives. The trays are solid metal, so are sturdy and robust. Putting them back in is as simple as slotting it in and screwing back in place. At the base of a chassis, you get a mix of cables that are the I.O. connections. Starting with audio, power and reset, and USB 2 headers. Then a USB 3 and a USB Type-C header. Move to the other side of a case, unlock it and you're presented with a large space. Plenty of room to work with. The GT supports Mini ITX, Micro ATX, ATX and EATX, with rubber grommets to the right for cable management. To the left you have an included 140mm blue ring fan. There is space at the rear for 120 or 140mm fans and 120 or 140mm radiators. Over to the right you get another panel that can house a 120, 140, 240, 280 or 360mm radiator. The hard drive trays can be removed to allow space for the larger radiators. Moving down again you see the vertical GPU bracket that has mounts that can be unscrewed and repositioned to your choosing. A further 2.5 inch drive tray that unscrews and slides out. To the right you have two drive caddies that house two trays that can each house a 2.5 or 3.5 inch drive. The trays are good quality plastic and slot straight back in. At the bottom of the case you have a pump reservoir mounting plate that slots and screws in. This entire PSU shroud can be removed too and there is space for a 120 or 240mm radiator and fans. Moving once again to the front of the case to the right, you have mounting points for a host of radiators from 120, 140, 180, 240, 280, 360 to 420mm radiators and three 120 or 140 or two 200mm fans. Through the front you can see the same fan filter that is featured within the top panel. Having covered every detail of the internals of a GT and the stunning aesthetics of the exterior, we come to the end of our review and it certainly didn't disappoint. Following on the level 20 modular theme, it certainly is one of the best options on the market currently. Ever so slightly deeper and longer than your usual full tower EATX case with lots of cooling and storage options to cater for all setups. What's more is a GT is actually completely modular. Every single panel, fascia, caddy, shroud, fan mount and more can be removed for the ultimate building experience or for those that wish to mod their case. This deep customization potential combined with the stunning looks, aggressive stamps and smooth curves with USB type C are just some of the reasons we have awarded the Level 20 GT our Platinum Gadget Joe Award with 5 stars. As usual I will leave a link down below as to where you can get your hands on your very own GT, XT or VT from the Level 20 range. If you liked this video give it a thumbs up, if you disliked it give it a thumbs down. Don't forget to hit subscribe and with that said it's goodbye from me and I'll see you in the next video.